I don't think most people realize how much better they could be feeling or they don't remember how much better they used to feel. You know, it's just kind of like you just get on with it. You muddle through. You don't realize, wow, I, I don't have to feel this way. And I think that's what we have to have faith in. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. We're in quarantine over here at Almost 30 Podcast. <laughs> we're, we're literally sitting on opposite ends of the room. I know. In the studio. <laughs> sick dude be vegan man i don't get sick (laughs) just kidding i don't know just kidding i like i get really sick once a year i yeah when i'm sick i'm sick exactly yeah because i'm pretty good the rest of the time Mm -hmm. but it's usually i don't get like baby sicknesses no like "Mm, i don't no you know it's usually brought on by like it's really stupid but like an intense workout it's like it it awakens the disease, mm. the virus. It's Aries. weird. Yeah, it fucking worked, woke it well, up. Well, you worked out three times on Sunday. Yeah. We were talking about someone that worked out three times and I literally got home. I'm like, Lindsay fucking had three, three I know. workouts in a row. But you have to think about, douche. but the activate, I'm not really on the bike. What do you mean? Are you on the floor? Yeah, for, yeah. Most, for most of the class, I'm on the floor. So sure, I thought sure. it was okay. Anywho, yeah, I'm on the up and up, guys. I got to get really well for this tour. Yeah, fuck yeah, you got to get well. Um, but what's your get well secrets? That's a great question. This one threw me for a loop because mm. it's literally like thrown me on my ass. But it's been like severe headache. I don't know if it's a migraine because I've never gotten migraines before, but I would guess that it might be. Wow. And then uh, fever every day body aches, chills, uh, all that stuff, which is, you know, it is what it is. But I just, I couldn't be looking at screens. Yeah, like I was I just like, that. I was like a sloth because I wanted, I had so many things I wanted to do. I'm like, oh, I'm in bed. I could like I be productive. That. And then I was just like, oh God. So mostly it's hydration, electrolytes. And I, I should be eating twice as many calories while you're sick, like healthy calories, because your body needs that much more energy to heal what's going on and to attack the virus. So a lot of the times when you're sick, obviously you don't have an appetite. I don't have an appetite, but I've been like trying to force feed myself a little bit because, you know, and we're like, oh, cool. Like we're sick, like get a little skinny, whatever. (laughs) It's really will extend the amount of time that it takes to heal the body. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. You don't believe it, but it's true. I don't. I'm not believing a lot today. But but think, but think, what's the deal? Think about it. So your body has no fuel to, to use as energy to fight the virus? The food you eat. Yeah, but when you're sick, you're not, you, you don't have an appetite. Yeah, I mean, so I, it's just thinking, I guess I've never not eat. I've never been like sick, not hungry. I just eat always. Oh, okay. Do you know? I, well, I'm always eating too, but this, I was like, oh, I'm not, not hungry. hungry. Feeling sick, yeah. But you need to eat. Despite what, you how you feel, <laughs> you need to feed that virus to keep it going. Keep it going. So yeah, here we are. But we always make time mm-hmm. to get this podcast out there to you all because mm-hmm. we love you so much. Thank you guys for s- subscribing, rating, and reviewing, and for sharing with friends. Yeah. Like, I literally get messages every day saying I shared this with my sister or with my best friend, mm-hmm. and like we listen together or we mm-hmm. talk about it every week. Like, it's just. So incredible. So keep doing that. Yeah. That's an order. I know. Yeah. Keep doing that. (laughs) So sweet. You guys keep us going. You keep this going. You keep the messages alive. So thanks so much. Yeah. Anything before we intro our uh, beloved guest who's been on the podcast before and freaking shook the earth. Well, talking about hormones. Yeah. So 
I don't know if you guys listened, but the first hormone health episode with Candace was a while ago, mm-hmm. um, which was really good. So I went through my hormone health journey, kind of um, healing my hormones naturally. I have posts on my blog on hundredblog.com about healing my hormones naturally. So you guys can read more about that if you want to learn how to heal your hormones naturally. But I've been eating a lot of fat lately. So I've been feeling like my hormones are making Isn't it happy. amazing. Yeah. Rocks. Eating fat is a game changer. Yeah. It, it really, it does satiate you, man. I'm like, mm-hmm. it fills you up. You know, and like, it, on, it honestly makes my brain work better. Yeah. I have more energy for a longer amount of Stable time. Stable energy. Before I work out in the morning, I'll do just like an avocado mm-hmm. with whatever you want on mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. But like that will keep me mm-hmm. until like, Probably lunch ish, mid morning. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes, yeah, so you're not like finding just like little snack shit. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The like, bars kill me. Dude, fuck bars. Fuck sorry. bars. Ooh. Sorry, do we have any bars? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Kalumi bars are the shit. I yeah, Kalumi bars. Actually, you know why? Because they have the marine collagen. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the shit. Yeah. And that will keep you satiated. So there's an exception. There you go. Yeah. Not just because. I'm trying to think of what them. else we used to snack on. Oh, I would do like fruit up the wazoo, which I don't think is bad. I'm, I'm eating fruit now again. I fucking yeah. love fruit. I'm love like fruit. I'm I like just stuck. feel it makes my skin look good. You what? My skin. Fruit oh. makes my skin look better. Totally. I've literally had a chin strap acne like for weeks now. Justin literally calls me chin strap. <laughs> <laughs> Keep really, it real. It's really tight. Um, so I'm trying to get rid of it, but I feel like I've been eating fruit now. Mm. And I'm just like, I kind of want to like, I don't, I just want to. I want to love fruit. Yeah, you don't want to demonize fruit. Nope. Yeah. Pineapple, the best. The best. Mango, the best. That's all I craved yesterday. And that's what I ordered. (laughs) Dude, I love that. Yeah, I was like, that's all I want. (laughs) Dude, I love a good, like, juicy mango Mm -hmm. strips. Oh, man. It's the best. Delicious. I can't wait to have kids and give them that. I know. You know what I mean? Bring it to the beach. This is like a fruit roll up, but it's not. It's not. That's what I'll say. Like, hey guys, I know your friends have fruit roll up, but like this is like that, but it's not. (laughs) We were talking, we were visiting our dear friend, Daniela Kendi, who was on the podcast a while back and she has a baby now. Little baby. So we met little Eliza and we were talking about how excited we are to completely control our child's palate. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I know. She's like, I was like, are you going to feed it sauerkraut? She's like, it's uh, five months. <laughs> She's like, you got to be careful about the digestion. Yeah. Chris is like, but sauerkraut. I'm like, you, yeah, I'm like, because you can. It's like an empty palate. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like you, if you don't give it anything sweet for a really long time, it won't crave it. Mm. Yeah, it's so true. It's so, even just as an adult, like when I take out certain things that are a little like triggers, mm-hmm. I don't crave it after like two to three weeks and it's fine. I know. I just don't give it that long. I know. Most of the time. (laughs) But yeah. Yeah. Trying to think what I don't crave anymore. I used to eat nut butters all the time. I don't really do that anymore. Mm. Can't really do that because of my allergy. I used to do mango a lot. Don't really crave that. Bars probably. Yeah. It's those quick fixes too. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's so true. Okay. So Candace episode. Yeah. This is important as always. Our first episode blew up almost 30 nation Mm -hmm. and um, we're excited to bring her back. And this one's really like answering a lot of questions that you had. So in the secret Facebook group, we asked you what questions you guys have related to hormone health. So we really went through those questions like how to get off birth control naturally. How do you know if birth control is right for you? Um, What are the types of hormones and how do they affect you? What does hormone imbalance look like? What does hormone balance look like? So this is basically for all the women um, expanding upon the conversation that we started a while ago with Candace, with Alyssa Vitti, um, a little bit with Bob Anderson, but mm-hmm. basically about hormone health and kind of how to manage and regulate your hormones so that you feel and look your best. Yeah. And I'm about to have my consultation with her because I, I did the test and all that stuff and got my results back. So she's going to dig into those results mm. and just kind of help me continue to balance my hormones. Um, so I'm excited for that. But you can also balance your hormones mm-hmm. and get tested and all of that, um, your home, hormonebalance.com. Um, but enjoy this episode. Share it with your friends if it resonates with you or you know someone who would really appreciate it and uh, join our secret Facebook group so we can talk about this. Yeah. Okay. See you there. This episode is brought to you by Schmidt's Naturals. Uh, If you haven't heard, you should not be using (laughs) 
any deodorant that isn't natural. I know. The yeah. aluminum. I know. You guys look it up. Google that shit. Yeah. It's Google really bad. It. Uh, so we're just, you know, we are we never want to push anything on you, but um, we do want to, as we're being educated, we want to share it with you. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Jamie Schmidt, she was on the podcast a couple weeks ago. And Love her. She's just helping um, the masses kind of change the way they think about natural you yeah, know, it's not this like untouchable thing that only hippies in freaking uh, you know Temesco Canyon. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's it's something that should be available to most people. Yeah, so we love Schmitz. It's our brand. It's my preferred brand of deodorant. I have one in my purse that I have. I have the charcoal in my car, and I love the way it goes on. It's super easy. It smells great. And then their toothpaste has changed the oh, game for me. So uh, fluoride is kind of a controversial and ingredient in toothpaste, but really thinking about these things that you're putting on, you know, your armpits, which are very close to um, your lymph. It's like a Mm -hmm. part of your lymphatic system. And then also to what you're brushing your teeth with. So these are amazing products that are affordable, that taste good, that work um, and are better for you. So that's why we love working with Schmitz. Yeah. And check out that episode with Jamie. She explains kind of the whole process, how she started and more about um, these products. It's amazing. Uh, So you can use our code almost. 30 A L M O S T 30 for 20% off your first order at schmidtsnaturals.com. I will spell it S C H M I D T S naturals.com. This episode is also brought to you by Vitruvi. Let's talk self care. Essential oils have made their way into my self care routine, and I don't think I'm going back. So listen, Vitruvi is carefully sourcing essential oils of premium quality from over 30 countries. Uh, They always source organic when possible. And they also believe that these essential oils shouldn't be so expensive or feel too precious. Uh, So they cut out the middleman and their prices are super, super reasonable. Essential oils range between like $10 and $20 per bottle. Like that's a really, really good price. Uh, Right now I'm loving their lavender oil. Um, I tend to diffuse it when I'm taking a bath at night or I use the eucalyptus um, in the morning if I'm taking a shower. I'll diffuse that. Um, I just really trust this brand. Um, And so does Gwyneth Paltrow and Vogue. Okay, just dropping that. Um, And they just want you to take care of yourself. Um, And in doing so, uh, you can take on the world. Okay. So for our listeners, you can use our code almost 30 A L M O S T three zero at vitruvi.com V I T R U V I. And it will give you 20% off. So our code almost 30 A L M O S T three zero at vitruvi.com 20% off. Try it out. Let us know what you think. You guys, we have Candace Birch back in the house, in the flesh. Last time it was so cute. Do you remember? We were like trying to, we were trying to FaceTime in and we were in the studio and we had, I don't know if we had done it before. We had done FaceTime in the studio. FaceTime or Skype or something like that. And we were just, oh boy. Do you remember that? No. We kept losing you at mm. first. We were oh, like, really? Oh, man, we're, we're ruining this. I know. It was a long <laughs> time ago, too. the queen of too. hormones. How do yeah. we, how do we not mess the that up? Horm- we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> we suck at this. But, we should throw in the towel. <laughs> <laughs> but we I, kept on trudging. Yeah, but um, we did it. But that's been one of our most popular episodes. So we decided to bring Candace back on the podcast. Are yep. you recording right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, did you think I was talking weird? You're like, stop talking weird. (laughs) Yeah, literally. Yeah. So we brought her back on. Candace, you know how we do. I hope so. We keep it real casual. (laughs) Cash. We keep it cash. And we have so many California cash. And we have so many questions personally. And then from our group, um, hormones is such a, you know, important. um, I don't know why it's become so popular. Is it just me? No, it's. It's popular. Is it? Because I, I feel like when we started, when we, right when, when I was talking to Ryan about my hormone issues, my health issues, Ryan was the first person to make me aware that it could be hormonal. And I was like, oh, I never thought about it. And then obviously mm. we had, we went through our journey together 
which you can listen to in the episode we recorded with Candace before me talking about my journey. And then also with Jess Sushin's episode, I talked about my hormone health journey and sort of mm-hmm. my journey with my body there. But I feel like I never heard about hormones until like until recently. Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of women didn't think about... It. When I first got involved in this, there women who were younger would say, I don't need to know about hormones. I'm not in menopause. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was always a menopause thing. Yeah. And I'd say there's been a sea change in the way people, I mean, this whole self-care, self-directed care movement, the wellness movement, Mm -hmm. prevention, you know, as a health educator, my emphasis is always on preventing disease. Most diseases and illnesses are um, preventable, you know, they're lifestyle diseases, um, habits, bad habits. (laughs) So um, there's uh, a lot we can do. And I think that your generation has really taken that by the cudgels and said, we're going to we know that doctors don't have all the answers. Sometimes we work with them in a complimentary way, but when they can't give us the answers Mm -hmm. we need, how many women have I talked to that have said to me, I'd say the number one question is, why didn't my doctor tell me about this? Why I went to my doctor with these symptoms, didn't he, he, she didn't say a word to me about hormones. And I think unfortunately, a lot of women don't um, know that much about, they don't understand that much. And I'd have to say some of the OBGYNs don't either you know, because they've been used to providing the same hormone replacement therapy for women in menopause and just putting younger women on birth control. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's been the The approach. And I think some, your generation is rebelling and saying, I don't feel good on birth control necessarily, or my symptoms are worse, or I don't feel like it's good for my body. I know it's unnatural and I just don't feel good about this approach. So they're looking further afield. What are the other options? And, and just over the last 15 years, when the Women's Health Initiative came out in 2003, showing that it was a huge study, the first long-term study of the effects of synthetic hormones on women's health. And they were looking at older women who were using HRT, hormone replacement therapy, Premarin, derived from pregnant mare's urine, right. and Progestin, which is a synthetic progesterone, which is not anything like progesterone. That combination... Um, was shown in many European studies over the years to be quite dangerous. But in America, Big Pharma had the, the, um, the corner on women's um, prescriptions, prescribed HRT. Everybody was getting the same dose. And the Women's Health Initiative finally, first long-term study, showed that women had a doubling in the risk for blood clots, a 29% increase in cardiovascular disease, a 30%, some, I think it was 30 something percent increase in stroke. And then this huge increase in breast cancer. If you look at the, uh, at the um, use of hormone replacement therapy over the last 30, 40 years, it goes right in tandem with the increase in breast cancer because most breast cancers are estrogen dependent. Estrogen is a growth hormone. It grows, multiplies, divides cells. You don't have the balance with other hormones and just estrogen going crazy, you're going to, you're going to be at risk for cancer. So there's no big difference between HRT and birth control. They're all synthetic hormones. They all do, you know, the same thing, which is to disrupt normal hormone production. And I think both women in menopause after the women's health initiative and younger women saw that, wow, this is a big deal. Older women stopped using HRT, like the prescriptions fell by 50% and women started looking at bioidentical hormones, which you can talk about, which European women have used for many decades. And uh, younger women started questioning birth control. So I think it's been over the last 10 years, a gradual, it hasn't just happened like that. I think it's been a a, a process. Mm -hmm. What have you observed like since maybe even before you were on our podcast, but I feel like a lot of women in our generation started to reach out to you, at least in our community, they did. And, and, um, oh, yeah. from other podcasts too. Um, and I just, I feel like we were, we were talking about this before, um, about what you've kind of observed and learned through the process of working with a younger generation who are dealing with these hormone imbalances. What has been like your observation and the most shocking part about it? I think the, that has, what has really surprised me was the number of women, the almost 30 women mm-hmm. who do have serious symptoms of imbalance. I mean, clear symptoms of hormonal imbalance, but 
until they had heard the podcast. And thank you so much for having me on that and having that conversation. Until they heard that, Mm -hmm. they didn't realize that it was a hormonal issue. I mean, maybe they knew it was kind of about their hormones, but they, but they, you know, like I said before, many people just become their symptoms and they live with this stuff. It's like when you're in high school and you have horrible periods and you've got to spend a day at home or two or three days, or you have horrible migraines or, you know, a PMS, the pass me the shotgun Mm-hmm. type of PMS where everybody you love in the world annoys you to death. <laughs> um, you know, did you ever think about that when you were younger, that that wasn't okay, that that wasn't normal? No, you just dealt with it, didn't you? Or you let your, you went to the doctor and they said, oh, your periods are irregular. You need to be put on birth control. So I've, my sh- most shocking revelation was from all these gals that have flooded to, to talk to me since being on your podcast saying, wow, I, everything you said was resonating with me. I have all of these symptoms or some of these symptoms. And, I, and what has occurred to me is that here we have young women in their late 20s and 30s who have the same darn symptoms as women in menopause. We have, we have people your age who have extreme anxiety, mm. extreme irritability, horrible heavy periods, well, that wouldn't be the same as menopause, but the, most of the women in menopause who have had an imbalance or who have an imbalance had a history of heavy, painful, crampy periods, classic sign of estrogen dominance. So, mm-hmm. you know, just the fact that younger women are put on birth control for all the same reasons that older women are put on HRT and, this, and it's all the same synthetic hormones in one dose fits all kinds of amounts and different variations on the theme. And everybody's got the same kind of symptoms. Younger women are, um, you know, they're, besides all the, the mood swings and the irritability, the anxiety is huge. Mm-hmm. That's been a big revelation. A lot of you have extreme anxiety, yeah. are not sleeping. You know, periods are horribly irregular, uh, bad skin issues, mm. and a lot of depression, you know, just mood, but, but the kind of depression that isn't, isn't really, it's sort of like, but I like my life. I love my life. I'm okay, but why am I depressed? You know, mm. I like my job. I like my work, I, but I'm just depressed. I have this low level depression all the time. So it's been, it's been startling to me. Even hot flashes and night sweats, which is such a common symptom of menopause, is common in my discussions with women of your age group. Because of the high estrogen or why, why would those menopausal symptoms? Uh, because, because of the imbalance of, mm. of um, estrogen to okay. progesterone primarily. Uh, okay. And that's the, those, two, those two hormones, progesterone and estrogen, are really the master female hormones. And they, they got to be in the right balance. Mm. If they're not in the right proportion, I mean, it can't be perfect balance, but they need to be close. And that's the other revelation, test results showing that with all of these younger gals that are testing, most of them have a very low progesterone level, a low ratio of progesterone to estrogen. So the balance is such that estrogen, even if it is on the low side or normal, is in excess relative to the progesterone. And when that happens, your estrogen dominant and that makes you gain weight. Mm-hmm. That makes you bloat, retain mm-hmm. water. That's linked to mood swings and, and uh, really bad PMS, tender breasts. Remember I talked about fear of hugging, you know, when you have that tender, tender breasts and um, you just, everything to do with growth and bloating and, and weight gain in the hips, thighs, all that um, is, you know, hallmark symptoms of estrogen dominance. Why? Because younger women are not ovulating. This is where I mean it's almost the same as women in menopause. We don't ovulate because we're past our periods. We're done. Our ovaries have packed up, no more ovulation. But younger women are not ovulating. Even women who are not on birth control are not apparently ovulating. And we can tell this because in a test result, if your progesterone's low, it's an indication you're not ovulating that cycle. Uh, progesterone's only made upon ovulation. Mm. So if your progesterone's really low, we have to say, well, you you're having cycles, maybe you're, maybe you're having a period. That doesn't mean you ovulated that period. Hmm. And if you don't ovulate, you don't make progesterone. And so what happens is the estrogen that was governing the first half of your cycle 
what is it doing? What does estrogen do? It's a growth hormone. So it grew our reproductive organs. It grew our boobs, our curves, that extra layer of adipose fat women have. It grows the egg in the ovary and it grows the blood rich lining of the uterus. When, so that's the whole first half of the cycle, the mm-hmm. follicular phase, the egg growing in the follicle within the ovary. Then when we ovulate, when we hopefully ovulate, day 12, 14 of the cycle, that follicle, the egg ruptures through the follicle that it was growing in, and it goes off down the friendly, the fallopian, fallopian tube tubes. to find the friendly sperm. And in the meantime, that ruptured follicle becomes its own little, it magically transforms itself into a whole new organ every cycle called the corpus luteum, which does nothing but produce progesterone the whole second half of the cycle. If the, and progesterone's job is to say to estrogen, okay, you, you, know, you grew the lining of the, mm-hmm. we got the lots of blood rich lining in the uterus. We got the egg, the egg grew, you've done your growth thing. Now we're going to stop the growth. We're going to calm things down. We're going to feather the nest in, in, in uh, preparation for a possible pregnancy. So pre- progesterone is the thing that checks and balances the growth. Estrogen's excitatory, progesterone's Would inhibitory. Would it increase the lining because it's preparing for the for the egg? What progesterone does is it it starts differentiating, as we say that it starts to make the lining stickier, it, more mucus, it, more yeah, so no. that the embryo can implant in okay. a possible mm, pregnancy. It starts to build the integrity of the uterine lining mm. to create a nice little home for that, uh, for the successful implantation of an embryo and a successful, uh, pregnancy. You have to have that lining in place. In fact, uh, women who have low progesterone and who don't have enough present when they're trying to take a baby to term have much higher miscarriage rates. There are Wow. Something like 39% increase in miscarriage rates if they when they're estrogen dominant. When their progesterone is low and estrogen So dominant. in your normal cycle, so for the first 12 to 14 days, your estrogen is higher than your progesterone, which is mm-hmm. normal. Mm-hmm. And then does it switch or does it become equalized when the progesterone picks up at 12 to 14 days in your cycle? The estrogen kind of goes down. And then progesterone They both picks up. peak okay. at around uh, day 19, 21, which is when we ask people to test. We want to get a good, like the surge, the period, okay. that window, day 1920, 20, 21 of the cycle is the window when, when estrogen and progesterone are both sort of at, at optimal levels. After that, uh, estrogen starts to decrease and progesterone is in the ascendance over that, that last half of the cycle. And then if there is, so progesterone's busy stopping the growth, stopping the thickening of the lining, trying to make it, you know, inhabitable for a possible embryo. If that doesn't happen if there is no fertilization of the egg, then it is progesterone that gives the signal. Progesterone drops and then the uterine lining sheds and you have your bleed. You have your period. And you need enough progesterone on board to have a good flow, to have a true flow, to have the flow that is cleaning out that lining. Because Mm -hmm. without enough progesterone, there's also this thing about yeah, maybe I ovulated it, but I didn't make enough progesterone this cycle. So there's insufficient progesterone issues. And that can mean that you don't shed the full lining. So it just keeps kind of building every cycle. Your, your hmm. uterine lining is, is thickening. Wow. It's not shedding as it should in a healthy manner. It can tend to thick, stay thick. And those are the gals that have heavy, heavy periods that may have cramping and blood clots and, um, you know, just horrible painful periods. Hmm. So <laughs> as, as one of the, but that, that's, I mean, a hallmark sign of the estrogen dominance being low progesterone or insufficient relative to estrogen is these heavy, painful periods. And what is one of the main reasons women are put on birth control, whether they're Their using period. it to prevent pregnancy or not for heavy, painful periods. So what does that do to the periods? How does it, how does birth control make periods more manageable? Birth control is just shutting down the whole, I mean, birth control, these synthetic hormones are taking over, they're, they're altering hormone levels so that everything's quite low. So you're not possibly, you know, they're just bringing it down to low levels. So, you know, some gals have, they're on, let's say low estrogen yeah. 
birth control. That was yeah, that's that what I was on. But now they find that they're on the low estrogen birth control and they have no cervical mucus or they have no, they may have vaginal dryness. They may have- I mean, it's crazy. I would have had no idea. If you would have been like, you have vaginal dryness, I'd be like, I have a vagina? <laughs> I'd be like, what? Like just no connection to my body at all. I would have never known. I forgot that like I would throughout like the cycle would have like mucus or fluid like- I forgot that that happened because when I went on birth control 12 years ago, it just all stopped and I didn't really even notice. I was just kind of like, oh, okay. But like when I had first gotten my period and for however many years before I went on birth control, like that was the normal part of the cycle. And as a young girl, you're like, oh, this is weird. This is gross. Like, uh. yeah. so when you're <laughs> finally, you're on birth control now and you're like, oh, this is so much better. My flow is lighter and I'm not getting that like liquid and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But you know, you start to see like, yes, the vaginal dryness, like you just, it's not, now I feel like I'm like, oh, wow, I'm at this place in my cycle. Remember? Like, I just, I'm like, whoa, this feels kind of cool. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like my body's doing what it, what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, exactly. That's a really important point. And I I hear that a lot from your, the younger generation (laughs) that I'm talking to now more. Because, you know, before Ryan said, oh, you should be on my friend's podcast and talk to Mm -hmm. us younger gals. I was talking to menopausal women all the time. Mm -hmm. I worked in a hormone testing lab for 15 years as their director of education, saw tons of test results, talked to, and it was always our main demographic was women over 45. Because you go, when you're, when you're in your, but we're seeing this perimenopause come on where the hormones start fluctuating earlier and earlier and women in their late thirties and um, early 40s, starting to have real roller coaster symptoms. But back to that question with the birth control, the idea is to lower these hormones, yep. to inhibit natural hormone production to the point where over time, when you've been on birth control, five, seven, so many of these, this is another thing. So many of the gals I'm talking to have been on birth control since they were 17, 14. Now they're 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're ready to maybe get pregnant, have mm-hmm. a family. They have a partner or somebody waiting yeah. in the wings. And now they're thinking about this. And, um, you know, it can become a real issue if you're not ovulating. My daughter asked me earlier, if you're not ovulating or having period, you know, if you're not ovulating, can you get pregnant? No. Really? If you don't so have a you're period? Only, you're only fertile, you can what, a- like six days a month? Yeah. I didn't know that. But wait, if you're not having a period, you mean you can't get no, pregnant? No, if you're not ovulating. You, you oh, so if there's still not have an a egg that's from, that's, if there's not eggs within, mm-hmm. so you can still have a period that doesn't have eggs in it? A period that doesn't have eggs in it. Because don't you releasing the lining? Oh, there's. If you, uh, you can have a period and the lining can shed without, you know, with a minimum amount of progesterone available, but that doesn't mean that you actually ovulated. That, oh. You can have. You, the adrenals create a little estri- uh, progesterone, but yeah, you can still have some blood flow every cycle, especially if you've been estrogen dominant and you've got a buildup in there. That mm. that ovulation is there's a signal there. The brain wants you to ovulate, so, so you could have your you period, but not. you're not ovulating. Yeah, may, how do you know you're ovulating? Not. Some women know, some women don't. We have a fertile focus thing here that oh, you can, yeah. you can oh, buy yeah. your personal ovulation microscope. So I can take that and see if I'm ovulating. Yeah. This is a, when you're about to ovulate, a distinct crystal or ferning pattern becomes present in your saliva. But you only ovulate certain days of the month? Yeah. Six-ish. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between, usually between days 12 and 14. And I only know that because of the apps I'm using to like follow. Oh yeah. What yeah. apps are you using? Like flow My, living. And that's important to flow living women. or whatever. Well, yeah. And Eve, I just use them both just for shits, but cool. It, it's cool. Cause I didn't know that you were only fertile like six days Yeah. I would month, love to see that, you know? So that's a good point to make with women who are afraid to go off birth control. If you're yes. only fertile six days a month and you can track it on a, on an app or using With something test, as simple yeah. as this fertile focus microscope, which has a little light in it, and you can so cool put a bit of saliva and on a on the um what do they have you put the saliva on a just some sort of surface on the lens of like the a fertile little... focus. I just got these recently, hoping to get my daughters to use them. <laughs> to <Yeah>. fertile? <laughs> to, to see if they're fertile? Or? <laughs> well, to, to encourage them to maybe go off the oh, hormonal yeah. birth control. Oh, are they on birth control? As I always say, birth control is oh, the Oh, Ryan vex- has copper. 
She has the Paragard. Is that fine? I have Paragard. What yeah, do you because think? I mean, what I think is this. I I feel like I'm seeing so many of these symptoms of these, these terrible menopausal type symptoms in younger women. There are something like 12 million women on birth control. And about 58% Ooh. of those are using birth control for reasons other than preventing a pregnancy. Main number, main reason is heavy, painful periods. Skin. Uh, mm-hmm. Skin breakouts. Makes your boobs bigger. <laughs> Migraines <laughs> and endometriosis. You know, think yeah. endometriosis is another one oh, that I've is that. totally linked to estrogen dominance. We're talking about growth, right? Growth of the uterine lining can become so overgrown that it migrates, that tissue in the, in, in the uterus actually migrates into the pelvic area and it, that tissue swells mm. every time there's a cycle and it's horribly painful. Yeah. So yeah, the birth control, the idea is let's, let's inhibit, let's take these synthetic hormones and shut down the body's own natural production of hormones. So when you test, if you're on birth control, and a lot of gals have been testing while on birth control using the test results as a baseline for to see what do, what do my levels look like. But understand, those levels are what are under the influence of the contraception. There are two ways to look at it. You could say, well, I, I probably know that my levels are going to be low because the contraception is shutting down my own hormone production to stop all these symptoms. But on the other hand, if you can test and see what your levels look like and correlate them with the symptoms that you're having, it's kind of a wake-up call. And a lot of the gals I'm talking to are saying, you know, I've known for a while, I've thought for a while that this birth control is really making me feel shitty. Mm. And it's part of why I just feel lousy all the time. And I I don't want to be on it, but I was using it for this reason or that reason. When you tell them, well, you know, if you take steps to rebalance your hormones naturally then you, you can do that. You can do that naturally, especially if you're not sexually active and you don't have a relationship right now. Why be on them? Mm-hmm. I've talked to women in their 50s who are still on birth control. Whoa. Because they were put on them when they were 22 for heavy periods. And there's yeah. still, I just talked to a woman the other day who's still on birth control. Is there any reason anyone would need to be on birth control? Well, if you, know, if you aren't a person who's had you know, symptoms of hormone imbalance. Unwittingly, you you didn't realize that your heavy periods or your PMS or your acne was all related to hormone imbalance and you went on birth control, then that's just going to make it worse. But if you're a person who hasn't had those symptoms and your periods have been pretty regular and you don't have big problems with your skin or your moods and you're sexually active, then yeah, I mean, the pill can be a wonderful thing, right? I was on the front line of when the pill came out and it was like, wow, sexual liberation. We don't have to, we can plan our families. We can, you know, we can have sex without getting pregnant. And it it has its usefulness. And I know a lot of people are very reluctant to come off because they don't want to get pregnant right now. And that's, that's where I say it's a vexed question. But if we can take the leap to at least, I would say to gals, especially now that I've been talking to so many of you, almost thirties, I really would suggest taking a break. If you've been on the pill Mm -hmm. for a long time, seven years, 10 years, take a break, give your body a break, give your mind a break. You know, if you're trying to get pregnant, you definitely want to have a good, you know, several months break off of birth control because it is so inhibiting your natural hormone production. You've got to give those ovaries a chance to wake back up and come back to life because they've been suppressed for so long Mm. and to be able to bring them back so that they can start producing their own hormone. And sometimes you need to give the ovaries a boost, a little natural Mm -hmm. progesterone to replenish the amount. Dancing, Macarena. (laughs) Yeah. That kind of thing. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you wake those ovaries up? Well, with younger women, I have been more and more suggesting um, Ricky Martin music. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still around? Yeah, he's an he's actor. Amazing. Now. He's an he's actor. Amazing. He's an he's, actor. He's definitely. He was gay. just in like some. He is gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has kids and a husband, and well, yeah, good for him. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. So he can still raise women's progesterone levels. Yes, now. Yeah. for sure. Just yeah. by looking at him, gorgeous <laughs> boy. <laughs> You know, I have been suggest there are two main suggestions. For a woman in menopause, it's always going to be progesterone because progesterone cream being bioidentical is quite benign. It can be purchased over the counter. There are a couple really good 
brands like Pro Progest by Emerita, which is a company out of Portland, Oregon, where I live, that has been doing this for 30 years and their progesterone has been in studies, et cetera. And I should explain what bioidentical is. But because women in menopause are not ovulating anymore at all, their ovaries have packed their bags, they're done, mm. they need to replenish. And as I often say, women didn't live to be much past 50, 100 years ago. So, but now we're living to be 80, 90. My mother just passed at 93. Mm -hmm. um, we're living to be much older now. So we need these hormones and our bodies aren't making them anymore. So we have to replenish. On the other side with younger women, if you haven't been ovulating forever because you've been on birth control or you're not ovulating for other reasons, like an abundant amount of prolonged and chronic stress in your life, which can inhibit ovulation. You know, if you're running from the Taliban, your body doesn't want you ovulating. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In its wisdom, it will stop ovulation. We know that high-performing athletes mm -hmm. don't ovulate. Mm -hmm. They have anovulatory cycles because extreme exercise will also inhibit being a vegan, not getting enough protein in the diet, not getting enough fat, the backbone of all hormones is cholesterol. So we need healthy fats in our diet. We need healthy proteins. So there are a lot of reasons why younger women don't ovulate apart from birth control. So it's getting a handle on all that, getting to understand what, what is involved in a successful ovulation. Yes, if you need to use birth control for a period of time, fine, but not for 15 years straight. I mean, take breaks, consider non-hormonal alternatives, of which there are many, but they're mostly barrier methods, mm. you know, mm. and that's, which, what does that mean? Like condoms? Yeah. Like yeah. there's the male condom, which is supposed to be much nicer these days when it was in my day, it was sort of like wearing a, well, I wasn't wearing <laughs> like it, but the like experience was kind of like raincoat, like rubber <laughs> oh, latex no. raincoat. Yeah. They have non-latex uh, male condoms now, which are supposed to be awfully... Mm -hmm. Has anyone experienced them here? In the no, room? I've never had sex. <laughs> You've never had sex in your whole life? No, Darn. No, Darn. no, I would assume that they're much better than they I were. Can't wait. I think they're much thinner and they're, you know, they yeah. probably have all kinds of juicy mm. stuff on them. I've, yeah. Yeah, they're like all crazy. It's like ribbed ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like oh, tastes wow. like watermelon. You're like, oh, oh boy. That was a letdown. <laughs> yeah. That was not ecstasy. Yeah, right. You're like, for <laughs> long, they're going to have cannabis, uh, cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to have like CBD I'd condoms. CBD, yeah. There Whoa. you go. That's a good idea. CBD That's a great condoms. Idea. I think they have CBD. Write that down. They Somebody have... write that. Yeah. It's going to be in her yeah. shop. That's our million oh, dollar man. idea. I think they have CBD lube. Yeah, it's called do. probably do yeah. company or something. It's yeah. CBD lube. We should reach out. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's, so there's the female condom. There's the today spun, the today, the sponge, the diaphragm, the cap, which has to be inserted, but hmm. you know, it's reusable. There's the, uh, and then finally the, um, the, oh, there's evidently a, a vaginal strip. Hmm. If you think of the, the whitening strips you put on your teeth, there's yeah. some kind of a, a female vaginal strip that you can, that is a spermicide that you can put on the tissues that's supposedly effective. Oh, cool. really? This is a newer, trendier thing. Cool. So, I mean, this is something gals need to do research into, yeah. but it's I really, strip. I really feel strongly that this use of this untrammeled use of birth control and the attitude that is that says, I don't have a period. I don't want a period. I don't want to have you, you. You know, if you ever think about wanting to get pregnant at some point or, you know, maybe that guy is or whoever, you know, that partner is waiting in the wings and you haven't met them yet. But to prepare your body for a successful pregnancy, you have to start thinking about yeah. natural hormone balancing. And if you have any of these symptoms we're talking about, um, if you have terrible heavy periods, if you have horrible PMS, if you're tired all the time and irritable and impatient, if you've got bad skin, that isn't normal. I mean, that's not okay. Mm. It's crazy. Like my skin, I, I basically went on it to fix my skin. There you go. There's and another reason for going on that. During it, like years into it, maybe halfway through, my skin freaked out. I mean, I was dealing with like, like really hard, big, like acne and mm -hmm. it would be like come up in the same spot after, you know, it would go away then come back in the same exact spot every month. And then I recently went off and I think it's a combination of giving up dairy. It's a combination of what I'm using for my skin, but also going off birth control. It's like my skin's finally like, huh, it's weird. I don't know why, but I definitely think there was like this, this, 
this cycle that happened where I like I went on it and it took care of it for a few years and then it just came right back and was super imbalanced. Well, you know, another thing with birth control, because it's tamping down estrogen progesterone levels so much, testosterone levels can relatively mm. can be relatively higher. And a high high testosterone level, the anabolic hormones, testosterone and DHEA are very much linked with oily skin, yep. breakouts. And ex- I'm like working out like I do. Hair. I feel like that increases my testosterone or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that also- Because you have a dick. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Shocking girl. Oh, oh yeah, your dick also. I'm just kidding. I have a dick too. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm learning new words new, I can say. There on you go. Podcast. Yeah, girl. You- we interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Spring. Everyone's been asking who is outfitting us for our tour, and it's our amazing friends at Spring. They have over 1,500 brands on the site. So from low to high, you know, which yep. which is great. Which you I know? love. Urban Outfitters. Easy, yeah. Free People. Mango, which is, mm-hmm. I miss Mango. So they have tons of different brands. Exactly like Lindsay said, low to high. So it's like, I don't know. It's been like a game changer for me. Actually, I don't like to shop. I fucking hate shopping. Dude, same. <laughs> and it's easy though on the app. You can like stuff. So mm-hmm. I just, it's like the same with Instagram. So you put a little heart and then I go back to my save and I'm like, okay, like what's going on? How could I filter these down? They match sales that are online. So you know, you're going to get the lowest price, which is amazing. Yeah. So I feel like I save and then they give you cash back. Cash back, yeah. So it's called Spring Back and you get 4% cash back. Yeah, I have like $60 like, of like on. free money that I got from just shopping. It's amazing. It's it's It seems like it's not real, but it is real. And the app is so easy to use, like Krista said. And what's so great is that you can fill out your profile and it takes like two seconds. And they suggest like yeah. different collections My stuff for is you. on point. And it's so on point. Yeah. I was like, wait, do you know me? Yeah, I was like, oh, how'd you know I like... Moo moos only. Mm-hmm. Literally. <laughs> um, so you can go to shopspring.com uh, or download their app. You can use our code almost 30 tour for 20% off. You're going to get cash back, 4% cash back when you shop. You are going to be sure that you're finding the biggest discount because they aggregate from all the sites. And then you get 20% off your first order with almost 30. So they have brands like Free People, Balenciaga, like mm-hmm. I said, Alexander Wang, 3.1, French Connection. And they also have kids, lifestyle, and beauty. Oh, so yeah. They have like experiences getting better- too. Yeah. What? I mean, I don't even know. So go to shopspring.com or download their app and you can use our code almost 30 tour for 20% off. So that's A L M O S T 30 T O U R for 20% off. This episode is also brought to you by Kapari Beauty. I just want to shout it from the rooftops when a brand does it right. Sometimes I'm a little skeptical about brands, um, especially, you know, when we're looking for brands that we want to work with. I really do my research and I'm kind of hard to please. I'm going to be honest with you because all of you out there really trust us and I want to make sure that I love and believe in the product and that it works and that I can trust this brand. We recently had on Gigi Goldman, one of the founders of Kapari Beauty. Stay tuned for that episode. But... Uh, I just love the story behind this brand, their commitment to the quality. And I love how they're so innovative and they are literally making products that their customers want. Okay, they're not guessing, they're asking and they are delivering. Uh, One of my favorites right now is the coconut body oil. It's this beautiful spray and it is highly absorbable. So I'm not slipping off my car seat when I put on coconut oil. It's like a major issue that I was having. And this is highly absorbable, moisturizes the skin. I'm also loving the lip glossy. The lip gloss is not sticky. It's shiny and it moisturizes my lips. I love it so much. So go to kaparibeauty.com, K-O-P-A-R-I beauty.com. And you can use our code ALMOST30 for 20% off. I should mention another thing that I'm noticing in young gals that is, you asked me what was revealing, low libido. Mm. Oh, girl, I hear about that all the time. All my friends, that's, talk about it a lot. Kind of meh. 
yep. and I love my Can live husband without it. and my Meh. boyfriend is the best boyfriend in the world and he doesn't think I'm attracted to him, but that's not it. Yeah. I just don't feel like it. I don't have the desire. Wow. It's, you know, so some of it can be, yeah, you're on birth control and you're on a low estrogen birth control and you don't have the, the juice. Mm-hmm. You don't, or your testosterone that you do have left is causing you to break out rather than causing you to have sexual desire because it's all, we're all talking imbalance. Wow. And you never know how these things, these, these hormones move down pathways and you don't, you know, the body kind of sends them down different pathways depending on how much stress you have, what oh. your diet's like. Um, you know, for instance, eating cruciferous vegetables is a great way to try to approach estrogen dominance, to reduce estrogen dominance, because cruciferous vegetables have an ingredient in them that is actually, actually promotes estrogen down the healthy pathway. There, you know, you've heard of methylation and breakdown of byproducts in the body. There are wow. three, there are three estrogen pathways. One of them goes down a pathway that stores estrogen, which is a big risk for breast cancer. There are two of them that are actually the two and the four, the, the two and the 16. And then there's the, the other pathway. It's too much chemistry. But anyway, eating broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, Brussels mm, sprouts. Kale. Kale. Kale helps to promote healthy estrogen metabolism so that you're not accumulating this buildup in the body because maybe you're low in progesterone, because maybe you drink out of plastic water bottles and eat food that has hormones. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another thing, avoiding xenoestrogens in the environment, the, the, the meat, the dairy industry, what do they do? They shoot their Animals up with growth hormone, which yeah, is especially uh, with the dairy. Yeah, it's they an estrogen them thing. all the time, so they're consistently pregnant. Mm-hmm. So you're eating the milk from an animal that is consistently pregnant unnaturally for its entire existence. Exactly, so fucked up. Eleven yeah. different forms of estrogen in milk. Oh. And I remember, Barf. I remember counseling Barf. a guy. That is the right response. That, so, so really important <laughs> to when you go shopping, you got to look at the label. It should say these on a on any kind of meat or dairy. Open the carton of the eggs, and it should say these hens were raised without yeah. hormones. Not good enough to say no added hormones. Yeah. It has mm. to say these animals were hormones. raised and without. Just cut the dairy. Just. Don't have the dairy. Sorry. Uh, I mean, it's we'll fucking say nasty. that. I'll I would, say it. it's fucking nasty. I would say that almost every gal I talk to that has cut out dairy feels a lot better. Yeah. Skin gets better. Skin you feel get better. better. Layer of fat comes yeah. off. Mm-hmm. It's honestly so... It, you don't have mucus in your mouth. You don't have like you your ability to get colds and like is like you have no, don't have that mucus buildup. You know where you're mm-hmm. like... <sighs> Yeah, mm-hmm. if you have constant colds, yeah. head cold, you know yeah, there is the inflammation the thing. leads to inflammation in the body. You know, it's just it's meant to grow a baby cow into a calf in a short amount of time. So mm-hmm. if you want to have those same things that are making this cow go from, you know, two hundred pounds to four hundred fifty pounds in a matter of months, like, mm. and guess who gets to go from two hundred fifty pounds to us? Yeah, yeah you literally. make your cattle eat. Uh, yeah. get fat faster so yeah. you can sell more protein to the pound and yeah. what happens to us it's yeah. the same thing so but i'm i'm almost always surprised at how little women know about they don't know the term xenoestrogen xeno means foreign unnatural to the body or endocrine disruptors that's another term that refers to all the chemicals in our environment mm. go to environmentalworkinggroup.org and check it out all the f- millions of chemicals that weren't present in our environment maybe 50 years ago yeah. that are there now. So the phthalates in your shower curtain. And, and that's like your makeup. Too. And your makeup. And, like shit in your makeup. Yeah. In the action plan that I provide people after we do the test and we consult for an hour, we talk through the results and I try to really help people understand. So, you know, this is what's going on with your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone. This is linked to the symptoms you have. We look at the stress hormones, et cetera. And, and explain how these things work in the body, how, they're, how that is specifically personalized to you. What, what are these, what can we tie this back to, to your experience of, you know, what you're suffering with, what you've been struggling with forever. And so many of these things are chronic. It just, people just forget that how much better they could be feeling. Mm-hmm. I was struck yesterday in the little event where people were talking about, I can make changes. I have my self-care strategy. I do. And and I think, you know, people notice, wow, when I stop 
using my iPhone at night, which by the way, the blue light off those gizmos totally disrupts melatonin yeah. production and jacks up your stress hormone cortisol. And you know, you're not going to sleep well. When you don't sleep well, your appetite hormones go haywire because they're on the sleep-wake cycle. So you're hungry mm. all the time and you have sugar cravings. So you notice that when you're not using your cell phone at night, you're actually sleeping better. So, you know, and people were talking about different changes they've made. You're just talking about dairy. The point is, you. I don't think most people re- really realize how much better they could be feeling or they don't remember how much better they used to feel. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like you just get on with it. You muddle through. You don't. You don't realize. Wow. I. I. This. I. I don't have to feel this way. And I think that's what we have to have faith in and say these one. Sm- you know, one small change. What does it take? Twenty one days to change a bad habit. Mm-hmm. But with hormone balancing, it takes adding in. You're doing ten things right, but then there's a few puzzle pieces you're missing. And the testing is the key because the testing shows you. Look right there in black and white, looks like you're not ovulating regularly. Your levels are really low here. Your levels are really high there. Mm-hmm. Your stress hormone levels are not following the normal curve. There's no way you're getting out of bed in the morning with any energy. So you said you had to take that test at a certain point in your cycle because I did have someone ask me, like, so your hormones are, your levels are changing every day. So when you take this type of test, how do, how do they know like what's accurate because it's different every day and how can how can you read that? So you're saying on did you say the nineteenth day? Nineteen, twenty, twenty one are okay. the is the is the kind of window. And there okay. certainly are there are labs that do testing that is called cycle mapping. So women that really want to map their cycle over twelve to fourteen day period, that's a much more involved okay. process it's like and spit some, every day or something. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's much more involved. And we felt at the lab that I worked at for so long, we saw in that this is the window, the optimal window to get a good picture of where your hormones are. And yes, they fluctuate, but they shouldn't be fluctuating dramatically. I mean, you know, like when I look at women your age that have low progesterone, I'm thinking, wow, you you should be making more. You should, your mm-hmm. body should be producing much better levels, more mm-hmm. optimal levels of this at 28 years old. Why is your, why are your levels so low? You know, they shouldn't, they should be, there's a range. So yes, they're changing, but we want them to be within the range. And often these are age adjusted ranges. And often you'll see a level that's within normal range, but it's on the very low end of the normal range. Normal is not optimal. You know, mm-hmm. we want we want good optimal amounts. Yeah. Cortisol stress hormones, sure they change every day. If you work out at night, you're gonna have a spike. Right. You're gonna see that. But if you see a really erratic curve with someone, you know that their adrenals are not operating at full capacity. They're not adjusting. They're supposed mm. to be adapting to your workout. They're supposed to be adapting to the fact you sat in traffic for you know, you know, it's not like right. your adrenals should go into meltdown like you did. <laughs> when, you know, the idea is we're supposed to be able to take stress in stride. That's what our little adrenals are supposed to be doing, pumping for us, making enough cortisol to get us up in the morning. We should be bounding out of bed with a whole bunch of energy, feeling great and refreshed. How many women are feeling that way? And again, your age group, how many women do I talk to that are dragging themselves out of yeah. bed and then dragging themselves through the day? And, and then, then drinking I, a ton of coffee and, and then, then drinking, freaking out. And, yeah. Drinking a lot of coffee, which really hits the adrenals hard. Yeah. And it, all this stimulation, you know, so they're going up and they're going down and they're not following the normal pattern. And then we have really low levels in the morning when they should be high. And we have really high levels at night mm. when they should be low. So this is the tossing and turning. I'm not sleeping all night. Mm-hmm. A lot of, lot of sleep problems yeah. too. Mm, yeah, that, I had the sleep problems too. I want to ask some... Yeah, we have some great questions from the group. Almost 30 Nation. Almost Secret, 30 almost Nation. 30 Facebook group. Um, so a bunch of people are asking a similar question. Yeah. So I'll try to um, to make it one question. So a are lot of them... currently right now questions coming in? Yeah, yeah that came in? in within the hour actually, oh, knowing yeah. you were coming. So advice for coming off the pill. Yep. Some have been on it for six years. I see one for 15 years. They're worried about hormones going a little wonky and wondering if the body will be able to balance them on their own. Um, Some have just come off the pill and are experiencing face fuzzies and spotting in between periods. Some are experiencing only one period in the last, you know, 
uh, six months that they've been off of the pill. So they're wondering if the irregularity is right. So in general, advice for coming off of the pill. Uh, we talked a little bit about it, but if there are things that they can be doing right away. I mean, you can wean yourself off the pill. You can go off cold turkey. I think basically something else I started to answer with you and then went off somewhere else. There's an herb called Vitex, hmm. which is chase tree berry. Ah, oh, cool. And Trace it's- Chase tree? Chase tree. Oh, chase, chase tree berry. Tree. It's um, an herb that's been used for centuries to restore normal cycles. And it's a particularly appropriate in younger women. Okay. I started to talk about this with older women. Progesterone is is probably, you can go directly to progesterone to replenish what your ovaries are no longer making because they're done. In younger women, your ovaries should still be working, especially if you come, you, you're coming off birth control and you're giving them a chance to wake back up. Mm -hmm. You can support that process with something like chase tree berry and try that first before you go to uh, progesterone. Some women really need to use a little progesterone to load, you know, a loading dose to get their cycles back. Mm -hmm. It can take a good year to get cycles back. It's good also year. important okay. to know that if you come off your birth control and you have horrendous symptoms, your skin breaks out, you start gaining weight, you feel miserable, that is more proof that you had a hormonal imbalance to begin with, mm. that the birth control exacerbated that, even more reason to stay off that synthetic birth control. Give your body that chance to recover. Support yourself with a little chase tree berry. I talk about adaptogenic formulas. You, yeah. You've heard of, um, you know, uh, there's so many of them. There's the R O H Rhodiola. Rhodiola. I don't know. Do if you have? Don't don't you have a sponsor? Hum. Four Sigmatic. Hum. hum. Yeah. Yeah. So hum whatever a sort of one. adaptogenic herbal formulation. Dong Kwai. You've got Kwai. Rhodiola, Eleuthero, Ginseng, Astragalus, Astragalus Ashwagandha. <laughs> You're killing it. I am awesome. <laughs> yeah. Donkey, <laughs> Dong Kwai, Astragalus, Astragalus. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm really ghetto. I, I, no, it's, just, it's it's like you read these the words. Words are like hard to pronounce, hard. but then you just like assume that you're saying it right. So you say it a lot. Yeah. We've had this before on the podcast where we're like, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how you, you know, say it. These adaptogens, <laughs> they're called adaptogens because they help the adrenals adapt, adapt to stress. To stress. Yeah, and they have been yeah. shown in Russian science. You know, they did a lot of studies in Russia with the astronaut program. They, they showed that these adaptogenic herbs actually strengthen and nourish the adrenals. So there's a really nice one I like called Adrena Soothe, which is um, by uh, Aviva Ram, who wrote a great book that I recommend to everyone, um, The Adrenal Thyroid Revolution, if you want to understand we'll that. We'll have this in our show notes. Yeah. yeah. She's uh, so... The pill and the book. Because some people, you know, I'll get emails from people saying there's so much out there and I go to Whole Foods and I try to buy something. There's too many choices. So just a formulation in mm. the action plan. I list a lot of these and yeah, you have great. I give you some good direction. But, you know, a good formulation, talk to, you know, the nutritionist in a good uh, compounding pharmacy or Whole Foods store. Not Oh, no. interesting. It's like in a pill. Yeah, it's a tincture. Or it's a tincture. And I like tinctures because- This is a tincture. Say it one more time. This is a tincture. Uh-oh. <laughs> more <I'm> smart. <laughs> I know a lot about stuff. Tinctures are good because they're easy to absorb. Yeah. yeah. Under the tongue, fast. Yeah. Yeah, carry it in your purse when you start to feel a meltdown coming yeah. on. Here and, we go. And we want to support these <laughs> wow. adrenals because they, if they're not working properly, they inhibit thyroid. Then here we go again with inhibiting ovulation. Yeah. It's all tied in. Okay. Just bought it. Oops. Um, <laughs> there she goes. Oops. <laughs> um, okay. So another question. Did I answer that one? Yeah, well that, was, that was great. Okay. So there is a question about PCOS. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, she had a gynecologist tell her that there was nothing she could do to heal her PCOS, but go on the pill. Is there any holistic advice on that? Or I, I'm not really familiar with PCOS, to be honest. Okay. So PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common. And there's, I think, like 20% of women in their fertile years can have PCOS, which can seriously affect fertility. 
So what we find for the most part is that women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which the definition of which is that you're not growing that nice egg in the ovary, you're creating, uh, there are a bunch of cysts on the ovary Mm, instead of that nice egg growing. And those cysts are producing androgens, testosterone and DHEA, instead of creating the nice balance of estrogen progesterone that the Mm -hmm. normal cycle provides, you are now creating a, a surplus of androgens, testosterone. So you're getting acne, and maybe excess fat. These are the the hallmark symptoms of PCOS are really bad skin. Not everybody has the same thing. Bad skin, breakouts, excess facial hair or body hair, Mm. very irritable, edgy moods, like very impatient, aggressive behavior, Mm. just feeling nasty a lot of the time, abdominal weight gain, Mm -hmm. and irregular periods. So, or absent periods, because as t- testosterone has is shutting down estrogen progesterone cycle. And one of the big reasons for this, and I think we talked about it before, is that generally these women, if it's not genetic, and that's the lower percentage of cause of PCOS, it is because of a diet high in junk food, sugar, car- simple carbs mm. that has gone on for years and years. Because what happens is, as you know, and especially if we're talking about adrenals are not operating either because you're under high stress, the adrenals have to regulate your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing a good job of that because they're tired, if blood sugar is erratic and you're bringing in a lot of sugar through your diet, insulin is being triggered to deal with all this blood sugar. Let's say you're, you continue to eat poorly, donuts, you know, fast food, Uh, you don't exercise enough, there's too much glucose in the system. That causes insulin resistance, high insulin. Mm. So blood sugar stays high and insulin stays high in an effort to deal with the sugar. Insulin will try to store glucose in muscle cells so that you can use it for energy. It'll store it in the liver and then it'll store it in the abdomen as fat. It doesn't Mm. know what to do with all this glucose. In the meantime, it's staying high and it is causing the ovaries to overproduce these androgens, testosterone and DHEA, which is what causes the cysts in the ovaries. So there's two. So the insulin resistance based on the poor diet, high in sugar and carbs over many years, is creating an insulin resistance situation, which then causes the ovaries to go into imbalance. We've got not enough estrogen, progesterone, and too much testosterone being produced. So we don't make a nice egg. We make cysts instead. And then we have all of these other symptoms. And down the road, if that continues, you're going, you know, you're going to suffer from infertility problems. So the question being natural hormone rebalancing can very much be an approach to Treating PCOS. To treating PCOS. It's changing your diet. It's looking into understanding what insulin resistance is about, understanding infl- inflammatory behaviors in the body. Um, you know, insulin is an inflammatory hormone as well. So you don't want to be insulin resistant. And one of the best ways to, to cut that is certainly is changing your diet, bringing in your omega-3s, making sure you get turmeric, for instance, in your smoothies, which is so anti-inflammatory. And oh, by the way, warms up the the uterus for mm. a possible pregnancy because you know you want that you want the uterus to be, you don't want it to be harboring yeast in a cold, dark, moist environment. You want it to be moist, but not you know, sure, but not too cold and damp to that can inhibit ovulation no, and it, nice and warm, like a little nice and warm. So like a in, little oven. So turmeric like is like good and cinnamon is good. All kinds of things that you can add into your diet to help create a more sensitive insulin response, supporting the adrenals with all those good adaptogens, supporting the adrenals with, um, either the chase tree or progesterone because progesterone actually breaks down to cortisol, the adrenal stress hormone. The adrenals Mm. need progesterone to make cortisol. This is probably getting too complicated. No, not at all. But the point being, there are certainly natural approaches to balancing your hormones and thus balancing yourself right out of a PCOS situation. 
Wow. It's not something that has to be permanent. I, it, it, you know, if it's been going on for a long time, it can be tough. There's going to be a transition, but it can be done. And there are plenty of functional medicine doctors and people, you know, my colleagues in the field and people like me who can provide women based on test results with an approach to dealing with that. We interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Everly Well. All right, Almost 30 Nation, I'm going to be real with you. I don't know how to get a lab test, okay? I don't know how to order it. I don't know who to ask. I don't know what it involves. Uh, And even just saying lab test makes me nervous. Um, But now I don't have to worry. Everly Well has saved the day. Everlywell.com is an at-home health testing company that offers tons of tests. I actually did the food sensitivity test, the heavy metals test, and the women's fertility test. Uh, Over the next month or so, Chris and I are going to be sharing our experience with Everly Well, uh, share with you some of our results that we don't mind sharing, and how we are kind of changing our lifestyle, diet, things like that to kind of counteract maybe uh, levels that are high or low um, according to our tests. Um, Each test is physician-reviewed private, simple, um, and it's processed through a certified lab, um, which is good to know. Um, So all you have to do is head to everlywell.com, choose your tests, and they'll be shipped directly to your doorstep. And then once you collect your samples uh, and send it back to Everlywell Certified Lab Partner, you'll get your doctor reviewed, easy to read results online in days. So you'll set up your account, super easy, and the results are easy to understand. So you don't have to wait in waiting rooms, no more like bill out of the blue um, and no more waiting on your results. So for our listeners, you can go to everlywell.com, E-V-E-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L.com and use our code ALMOST30, A-L-M-O-S-T-3-0 to take 15% off your first order. So that's everlywell.com, promo code ALMOST30 for 15% off. And on Thursday, we're doing a giveaway with Everly Well. So stay tuned. We will be announcing that on our Instagram at Almost 30 Podcast. Uh, we're so excited. And listen, this is the time to take control of your health. You know, I think the resistance comes and uh, it will always come right before we know the truth. And there's so much power in knowing the truth when it comes to your health. We love you guys. Join our secret Facebook group so we can talk more about Everly Well. We had a question, which we covered a little bit, the cystic acne, the hormonal cystic acne. So clarify for me too. So is it, is it hormonal cystic acne or is it a result of the hormones that, that you're being put on? Like, it's like, what came first in terms of like, so did you go on birth control and most likely because of that, that influx of hormones, you're getting the acne or is it the imbalance or is it? What is causing the cystic acne? <laughs> I think. Sorry, I I'm think, like no. Well, I'm I think confused. if it's if it's pill, if it's from the birth control pill, and I had that problem too. I used to have nice skin until I took the birth control pill mm. in the '60s, and then uh, my skin broke out horribly, and I'm still dealing with the scars of that, which are now melding into the wrinkles, which is really nice. <laughs> if anybody has a cure out there. <laughs> You know, I think with the birth control, it can be this inhibition of progesterone estrogen, and okay. which causes a relative increase of or relatively higher androgen levels. The androgen uh. hormones. Andro means male in Greek. Mm. So men have more testosterone. They have heavier bones, heavier muscles, uh, excess hair and all that. that. That is all linked to an oilier skin. So that's all linked to... Um, the acne. Okay. You know, if there's if there's an imbalance, think of the seesaw, the estrogen progesterone's down there and the testosterone's up there and it's it's the result of this birth control, then you're going to probably have some some cystic painful acne and then if your diet is also Exactly. I was going to say like maybe across the board, like cover all yeah, bases. It's never one thing. Take out the dairy and then also mm-hmm. look at are you taking birth control and then also monitor your stress your cortisol, you know, like if monitor you're, your, right. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, inflammatory foods, mm. um, gluten, you know, is yeah. certainly a big one for reducing inflammation. There's so many things that have right. to be done. And that's one of 
our, my approach with uh, Jess, my daughter and I are working on a, we have a weight management package and because she has a sugar cleanse mm-hmm. that's attached to that and counsels people on proper eating, that is very key to, you know, getting a handle on the acne. Definitely, because okay. it, it, you know, oh, you, yeah, it's it's all about hormone balancing, and you got to and your digestion and your yeah. gut flora, and mm-hmm. you know, I think skin is is your is all digestion from you know my experience or digestion or just like what you're eating. For me, feels like skin. You know, I definitely think it's hormonal too, but I think it just lives. Whatever you're eating is like living on your face. Yeah, mm. and your skin is teeming with receptors for mm-hmm. hormones, so you know, when from top to toe. So when hormones are off, God knows you can get not only just the acne, but how about all the rashes and dermatitis issues that women have, psoriasis and melasma, discoloring of the skin. Mm, And there's there's a number of skin issues that are all, you know, a cluster. Hmm. Um, Just last question from the group, but to piggyback off of your digestion point, hormone health and digestion, the connection between those two one of our listeners has had chronically low hormones, if that's something, low hormones and adrenals. So maybe she means low. Est- Probably she might mean low, uh, low cortisol stress hormones. Okay. And, yeah. and she's been, um, she's thinking that it's related to the intestinal issues she picked up traveling. So I don't know what came first. That's interesting. But she just has always had trouble with her gut. So she's wondering mm-hmm. if it's because of a hormonal so I guess, imbalance. Is there a connection between digestion and hormones? There is. I mean, mm-hmm. irritable bowel syndrome is linked with estrogen dominance. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. There, there are several connections. You have to. Uh, that's why I like the test results because I like to I know. see yeah. what are the levels, exactly. and then we can kind of link it. But exactly. But definitely, um, we're going to recommend that to all of our babes. In the you know, and then this issue with. Uh, the, the adrenal glands, she was traveling. She might have become exhausted in her travels. Perhaps her adrenals got exhausted having, and the adrenals do, you know, they'll work and work and work for you, but at a certain point, they'll start to crash. And mm-hmm. then if they're not operating properly, then the thyroid is inhibited. And then you can have also digestive issues linked to the thyroid also. And it's all this knock on effect. But a lot of women I talk to will say, wow, I thought my adrenal levels would be high. I thought my cortisol levels would be high because I'm under so much stress and I have this high octane job and, you know, I never sleep. And, mm. and, and really that person might have had high levels a couple of years ago or at a, some other point in time. But if this is chronic, you know, stress that has taken center stage in your life. And I often say stress is all things to, to the anything you have to react to in any physical, emotional, mental response is a stressor. It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, it, it can be anything from divorce to donuts. You know, it can be a high sugar diet. It can be death it can in be the family. It can be exercise that you love. Exercise you love. It can be yeah. weddings, birthdays, Christmas. The body doesn't know the difference. It just has to produce enough of this adrenal hormone to keep you going. You know, you can't live without cortisol. There's a thing called Addison's disease. JFK had it after, you know, many vets have it. Their adrenals are shot from tr- stress, mm. post-traumatic stress. They have to take wow. cortisone for the rest of their lives. But anyway, the adrenals can actually start to slump. They may have been high for a while, but the, as this prolonged stress continues, if there aren't periods of turning off, I don't think people know how to turn off in our society anymore. It's really hard yeah. For people to relax, especially people your age group, I've noticed say, I'm always on the go. You know, you have full on careers. Uh, Many women are, you know, the whole story. You've got kids, you've got, there's a woman I was talking to the other day who's a lawyer with a high powered firm. She works 70 hours a week. She's got two little kids. She's got a lot going on and her levels were just flatlined, you know, really low. And so she's at a place where she has no energy. She's storing fat in her belly. She gets sick often. She gets allergies and asthma. Um, she, when she does get sick, she doesn't, it takes her a long time to bounce back. Mm. This is adrenal stuff and especially the belly fat. That's a big connection. When your adrenals are shot and they're tired and they're not working for you, 
your calorie burning goes down. It all, you know, it's all tied in with thyroid stuff. So um, efficiency of, of calorie burning uh, is depleted and the body wants you to store fat. It's a survival mode mm. thing. It says we got to give her some extra fuel. She's under stress for yeah. whatever reason. And the body wants that storage to go on. So it will encourage overeating. Women that don't sleep, you know, women that get five, six hours of sleep a, a night often have weight problems mm -hmm. because that affects the appetite hormones and how food is, it's just, it's, it's all of a piece, you know? Wow. My last question is um, about getting pregnant and like giving birth. So if you are, have hormone issues, are you less likely to be able to get pregnant? Like, will it be more difficult for you? Like what does the, what's the link between hormone imbalance and fertility? Well, I mean, or ability there are a couple conceive. big ones is, first of all, if your estrogen is too low to grow an egg, to pop an egg, then that would be a problem. If your progesterone is too low to maintain the integrity of the uterine lining where that embryo needs to implant. So many women who do manage to get pregnant after having some trouble may use progesterone to maintain the, that lining for the first 12 weeks of their pregnancy. So cream, progesterone cream? Progesterone cream. Cool, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, women that go to fertility clinics are given natural progesterone, mm -hmm. not wow. synthetic, natural progesterone. And Which is the cream? I don't know how they, uh, they probably inject we'll them. Ask. I think oh. they inject them, women yeah. who are really trying hard that have been way low in progesterone. Wow. So miscarriage rates, as I mentioned, are higher among women that are low in progesterone. You don't want to have too much testosterone that relative to estrogen and progesterone because yeah. that's going to put you in a, that polycystic ovary mm. ovarian syndrome. So mm. you're not growing an egg, you're growing cysts. Mm. That's going to affect fertility. So it, yeah, it's absolute. And if your adrenals are off, that's going to affect ovulation. So, you know, there's so many things that do affect successful ovulation, successful conception, successfully taking that pregnancy to term. And so becoming aware of that in, when you're in your early thirties, you know, you have, I had my daughter, my first daughter, when I was 37, I waited a long time. Was it easy for you? Um, it was actually, but I never really had big, you know, I had regular periods. I'm not one of those people that had a lot of hormonal problems and I wasn't on the pill that long. Mm. It just made me feel mm. so crappy that I didn't stay on it that long. So I didn't, I didn't, I had easy periods. I had easy pregnancies, even at 41 when I had Ryan, no, I love no big, yeah. no I big problems. That. But, you know, I obviously didn't have a shortage of these. I didn't have any major imbalances at lucky for me. Wow. That's, it's amazing really. But I do think that in the last 10, 15 years, life has gotten a lot more stressful. When my kids grew up, we didn't, I didn't have to limit cell phones or we, we had dinner around the table. We had family time. We had downtime where we, I, I just don't know how, I think that we are living in, in a time of such abundant stress that there isn't time to ovulate. I mean, yeah. It's almost like Quite literally. we're rushing through life and we're not, you know, when I ask people make a list of the 10 things you love to do most in all the world, that's easy. But when you go back through that list, ask yourself, when is the last time? that you mm. went to bed early or went camping or went to the theater or turned off your phone and put it in another, turned it off. When is the last time you did something creative, painting or, mm. you know, singing or, you know, even exercise that isn't the kind of exercise that is high impact, high impact, yeah. high, high performance exercise, high intensity exercise, but stretching exercise that releases tension held mm -hmm. in the muscles that's shown to reduce stress levels. So, you know, we need to stretch, we need to breathe. Uh, Andrew Wiles, wonderful breathing technique, the four, four what is it? Seven, four, seven, eight. eight. Yeah. If you can't sleep at night, it's that amazing, is yeah. a good one for just, and that has been shown to reduce stress hormone levels. So, you know, when I, when I test people and we go through this and I send that action plan, it is talking about all the different ways to balance your hormones using herbs like Vitex, using bioidentical hormones like progesterone. 
Uh, estrogen has to be prescribed. It's usually not needed for anybody that isn't in menopause. You gals should be able to make enough hormone there, estrogen, progesterone, and the right balance of it if you modulate your stress, if your diet is not full of inflammatory, processed, sugary foods, mm. if you're getting enough sleep, if you're getting enough protein, if you are keeping your blood sugar stable and not letting hours and hours go by with between meals because you think if you ate a croissant and coffee in the morning and you don't eat till two, that that's fine. No problem. It's no. not. So all of those things are lifestyle things, avoiding mm-hmm. xenoestrogens. Um, I even have an app on there that tells you how to look up. It's called Think Dirty. I love and, Think Dirty. Yeah. So there's, really showed us So that, it's a yeah. lifestyle. It's a holistic thing. I'm not saying that you need to use horm- any one thing. It's mm-hmm. supplements. B6 is absolutely imperative for your body to make progesterone. Things like that, you know, are mm. just key. And it's a learning process. I meant to mention about the PCOS d Cairo in Ocetol is a compound that's been used very successfully to help women with PCOS, a Ooh. natural compound, d Cairo in Ocetol. Got it. Look that up, ladies. Okay. So, you know, it's an education and, yeah. and there's a lot to it. And when I get off the phone with women, they'll say, wow, that was a lot of information I say, did it make sense to you? It usually does in, a, in that we can correlate mm. what was on your... So we're talking about a lot of stuff today here. But when you test and you can come down to looking at your own levels and we can identify this is low, this is high, and to what extent those imbalances are related to your own symptoms of imbalance, then it starts to make sense. Then you've got these numbers in black and white, you've got these curves that show you a picture of your stress levels throughout the course of, of mm. a day and which are probably pretty reflective of what how your adrenals are behaving. You can start to take action. And nobody's going to do every single thing that I suggest, but we, you know, there are many things you can do and you got to look at the plan and say, hey, I can do this. I can do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I will do. And then stick with it and be yeah. consistent. And, and people say to me, when should I retest? Three months of being consistent with a hormone balancing approach is a great time to, you know, test, test after three months or just notice your symptoms are way better. How, what did you experience? I think we tested after nine months. Yeah. I think ours was a while. Um, And your cortisol levels were way better. mm -hmm. I think your adrenals. My, My adrenals were better. I had estrogen dominance and that was back in balance. And then my testosterone increased. Mm-hmm. From being low, yeah, which is um, my a good DHEA thing. was much more normal. That mm-hmm. was kind of out of whack. So, yeah, mine was nine months. I mean, it maybe took sooner, but I didn't. I don't feel like it honestly took any sooner than nine months. Mm-hmm. It took a while, you know, for me to feel normal and feel yeah. less bloated, and for the weight to kind of be normalized and stuff like that. So, yeah, three months or you know a little bit longer if you're going to be on birth, if you've been on birth control for a while or you've been really fucking with your hormones for a long time. Yeah, you know, like I had been. So, mm-hmm. but definitely retesting is really important. Well, I think it's the responsible. I mean, I feel better if people retest because, I, you know, yeah. if you were if you had a thyroid issue mm-hmm. or a diabetes issue, or you would test, it's yeah. routine. But this hormone thing, we don't have our doctors saying to us, "You need to." There's a test, yeah. and mm-hmm. you need to identify this, and you need to monitor this. Yeah, you know, some some women are on hormone because they need to be. Women who've had hysterectomies, there are far too many women that have had hysterectomies needlessly. Why? Because they had a heavy heavy periods or fibroids, or any of those things related to growth, which was all the way back to that estrogen dominant thing. Mm. It didn't get identified. Instead, they got a hysterectomy, and now they have no hormone production, especially if they had a total hysterectomy. They need to be on hormone. It needs to be prescribed, and it needs to be monitored. Mm. You don't use something like a hormone without monitoring. And even bioidenticals, which I'm talking about, which are derived from plants, they're made to be exact in structure and function to the hormones our own bodies make. So we always say a hormone's like a key that fits into the lock of the cell where hormones go in and do their thing, flipping all the mis- master switches. That key is supposed to fit like the key to your front door. So synthetic hormones don't work that way. They, right. Big Pharma's got to put all kinds of new molecules on stuff to be able to patent and get a profit. Mm-hmm. They, they can't get a patent on a natural substance. So that's why bioidenticals, I think, to a great degree, have been sort of not 
pushed aside. They've yeah, been not pushed. Yeah, but wise women know, and it's changing. It's That's changed great. hugely. So many women are on bioidenticals now, and the whole functional medicine world is all about let's use something natural, let's find out the cause and then use natural means to get to the cure. That's great. Love it. Krista, you want to tell them about what, we're, what they're offering? Oh, for yeah. Our so also make sure to listen to the, so listen to the first episode with Candice. That was where I really talked about my hormone journey and healing my hormones naturally and um, sort of the issues I was experiencing and really how Candace came in and helped me feel more like myself and helped me to, again, balance my hormones in a natural way. You know, I did it over time and I did it incorporating a bunch of practices that um, Jess Suchin, her daughter, helped me to figure out and do. And that was all natural. You know, that was eating more fat, that was doing more lifting, that was doing mm -hmm. less intense workouts, et cetera. But make sure to listen to that episode. Um, and I talked about taking the test. The test is really easy. Um, I had my session with Candice, which was super informative. And then I retook and, you know, was able to incorporate all the practices that she talked about. But um, for almost 30 listeners, we are offering $50 off all packages of with your hormone balance. So with Candice. So use the discount code almost 30 as we do with all of our codes, $50 off all packages, use code almost 30. And I encourage you from, you know, a deep, a deep place to get tested, especially if you're feeling a little bit off. This for me was the missing piece of my life to really understand my body. And they're also doing a special a weight management package, which includes the hormone test kit. So this is the test kit that you need to take to understand where you are at currently with your hormones. It has vitamin D testing, which is important because a lot of people are vitamin D deficient. So understanding your vitamin D levels is very important. I'm very deficient. Yeah. Yeah. In Kurdza, do you take... Uh, no, but I'm going to. Yeah. The hum. Here comes the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know. Threefold increase in abdominal fat, body fat, and particularly abdominal fat in people that are D deficient. Wow. Mm, interesting. According That's to the enough. Framingham Heart Study. Yeah. Wow. Really interesting. So hum nutrition, uh, here comes the sun is a great vitamin D supplement. Oh, that's great. Almost mm -hmm. 30 nation. You can use that code. <laughs> and then, so also in this package, in addition to the vitamin D testing, you get a consult with Candace. So my consult was what, where she gave me my prescription of what I needed to do naturally to heal myself. You also get a consult with um, nutritionist, Jess Suchin of Body Bliss by Jess. She is my nutritionist and she's also been on this podcast. So during that consult, you'll really go to the nutrition and the health component of hormones um, and what you can eat, what you can do physically to make yourself feel better. And then it also includes her sugar cleanse, um, her sexy sugar cleanse, which is a book and provides a guide for you to come off of sugar or cleanse from sugar um, to really feel more like yourself. I think through my hormone journey, reducing my sugar and almost trying to eliminate it at some points in my life has really been a pivotal part of feeling like myself. So $50 off all packages, use code almost 30. And then the special with the weight management package, which includes basically the hormone side and then the health and nutrition side. Right. Yeah. So yourhormonebalance.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go Candice, go. All that, all that stuff is on there. And that sugar cleanse is a good first step if you do have PCOS. Yes. Uh, totally. That would be an important place totally. to begin. Definitely. I love that. Candace, love it. thanks for being here. Thanks so yeah. much. Uh, well, I hope it all made sense. It's a lot of information. It is it a lot is, of but information, but I mean, Hopefully. you know, I... I I think that we kind of need, a lot of people do need the science side too, mm -hmm. rather than just being told what to do for, to understand the why I think is really important to people. So mm -hmm. I think it was Well, great. this is all physiology. Yeah. It's a, this isn't, we're not making this stuff yep. up. It's the yep. way your body not works woo -woo. and understanding it better is the first step. Getting to know your ovaries. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Hi. laughs> <laughs> We're in balance. Off. We love you. Join our secret Facebook group. Let's talk about this episode. Um, Connect with us on Instagram yeah. at almost 30 podcast, almost 30 podcast.com. Check out our shop. We have a bunch of these supplements and stuff in there. In the show notes, we have all the links to everything so you can buy it easily. And then patreon.com slash almost 30 to get extras. YouTube slash almost 30 to view our YouTubes. 
we're all over. So love you. Love Let's you. talk about this episode in the group. See you next week. Go in balance. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Go in balance, sir. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Cool, I feel cool. like everyone's little hands have been writing mm-hmm. little notes. They're it's one of those episodes. Little ovaries. Um, you can uh, chat with us in the secret Facebook group if mm-hmm. you have any questions following mm-hmm. the episode. We talk about this kind of stuff a lot all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and exciting. We have a discount. Oh, yeah. For your hormone balance. So Candace has her company, Your Hormone Balance. And that is... Um, where I got tested. That's where Lindsay got tested. I worked with Candace to help heal my hormones naturally. And um, Ryan, one of my good friends is also works for that company. So you can get a package at your hormone balance. You can get tested. You can, you know, get a plan to figure out your hormone health. Just tell them and use the code almost 30 and you get $50 off any package. Yeah. Your hormone balance.com. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this episode again, share with anyone you think might benefit from this episode, um, rate and review on iTunes. It means the world to us. Yeah, rate and review. Send us a screenshot and I'll send you a hundred (laughs) bucks. Chris just said that. Yeah, I said that. I'll give you a hundred bucks. I hope, I hope that we can do that one day. Yeah. Just like fucking rain money on everyone. Oh, I can't wait. It'll be amazing. I know. I want to be like a radio show where we like pay everyone's bills. Yeah, we're prank calling and we're like... (laughs) You got a new car. What is it about? Like, pay your bills. Yeah, 100%. Can we do something else? Yeah, it's like, what is it? Power 106. Play six songs within the hour. Get $100,000. Like, uh-huh. I just don't know where they get the money, man. Who's listening to the I don't radio? Know. You know what I mean? But Have we talked? Did I talk about that? I know I talked about my stories, but the fact that they still prank call on the radio. Oh, my God. I cannot. Even, even like the Ryan's Roses. It's all scripted. It's it's so it's so, so fucking dumb. corny, dude. Yeah, there's nothing fucking cornier than the radio. Oh yeah, and then they're like <laughs> prank calling. They're like, oh, we're prank calling Miguel's mom, and she doesn't know that like the guy's outside and he cheated on her, and she and the mom gets so mad. She's like, oh my god, and then they're like prank. Ah. So dumb. So dumb, and it's so scripted. And People if the roses, aren't that dumb. if the roses is real, what is the roses? I don't even know that. Oh. They call, they have someone call in like a, a wife mm. and she suspects her husband of cheating. So the radio um, guises themselves as a flower shop. Hi, this is Rosita from uh, Flowers on Main and you've won a bouquet of flowers for free. Like no charge, no nothing. We just need your the address and the note in the card. We're just trying to, um, you know, promote our business. And like most of the time the guy is like, you know, he'll send it to someone. Sometimes it's the wife, but if like, you know, full on cheating, they're like, oh, I'll send it to uh, Tiffany. Um, And in the note, I'd love to say um, last night was hotter than the Sahara. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, literally. It's like the panties in my, yeah, in my glove compartment. You left something at my place. Come by later. Like so dumb, but it's like. Can we not publicly shame people? Like, 100%. can we, can you just have a conversation with your husband that's like, <laughs> hey, I think you're cheating because of X, Y, and Z. Come on. Instead of like having them on the fucking radio. <laughs> She's like, I've seen a thousand dollars from Spearmint Rhino in the past month. I think that you might be cheating on me. <laughs> She's like, I should probably call Ryan Seacrest and he could figure Literally. it out. <laughs> Literally. It's crazy. And then Ryan will really weigh in. You know what I mean? That's why I think it's fake. It's Sorry, fake Ryan. Do dudes ever? Is it dudes? Yeah, it's both. Okay, cool. It's both. I just don't want it to always be like no. women. No, it's both. Like, And just, yeah, just to have a conversation with your husband. Yeah, yeah come on. Anyway, back to Candace Birch. Sorry about wow. that. <laughs> that was a tangent. Oh, wow. We know you love that episode. So tell us about it. Um, you can screenshot you listening to the podcast and mm-hmm. tag us. Like we love all of that and we will yep. post all of that shit. Yep. And then we will share it with all of our followers. Yeah. So. We love you guys. So thanks for listening and we will see you on Thursday. We have a double episode week. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.